Now, from the WBRZ Sports 2 team, it's the Friday Night Blitz. That's right. We are back for one last edition of the Friday Night Blitz. Bree Andrus and Jack Schimmel joining you here, bringing you all the highlights. Michael Cobble in Gainesville ahead of LSU's date with Florida. But Jack, the postseason started this week on the high school scene. Yeah, and over at Zachary, the Broncos hoping to bounce back from a tough end of the season where David Brewer team, Brewer Tim's team lost the last two games of the season and let's go to the corral the broncos hosting sam houston also the broncos in a division one non-select playoff game first zachary drive caleb gonzalez drops back and lets it rip and trey cheney runs right under it beautiful nice. pitch and catch touchdown zachary it's seven to nothing less than a minute into this game then after the home team gets a stop zachary gonna throw it again gonzalez another deep ball and cheney He's there once again, all the way down to the one yard line. Zachary punches it in a play later, and the Broncos lead 14 to nothing before you can blink. Still first quarter, Zachary with it again. This time they go back to their bread and butter. DeVecchio Ruffin takes the handoff. He has a huge hole to run through. Touchdown, Zachary, and they go on to win big tonight. The Broncos will travel to three seed Ruston next week. Rustin actually beat Zachary in the state title game last season, so the Broncos hoping to get some revenge there. Yeah, that will be an interesting game, but sticking with 5A, Denham Springs getting the win over West Washita. Nice stuff there from Brett Beard's team. But uh, let's now go down to 4A, some 4A action across the river over in Iberville Parish. Plaquemine Green Devils. Uh, looking to get a big win. It was no different tonight with their high scoring attack by the third quarter. The Devils lead 43 0, and now they're just finishing things off. Uh, Plaquemine spoils Grant's drive in the fourth quarter. Ahmad Sykes gets the catch, but Zachariah Dorsey takes him down, and the ball comes loose. It's recovered by Josiah Lewis, and that will about do it. They had the second team in, it was a running clock. The Green Devils. Second lining to victory here. The band was loving it. The team, the cheerleaders, <laughs> everyone having a great time. They won this one big 43 to nothing to extend their win streak to 10 in a row. And they will play Northwest next week. That's 10 straight wins for the Green Devils. Absolutely. And we still don't have a score yet in this West Feliciana game. Uh, you can check out our website uh, when that comes out. Now let's get back to the West side. Brutally hosting South Beauregard in a Division II select opening round game. Panthers up 34, 35 to 14 at the half. But check out this play from the Knights in the third quarter. Parker Fontenot rolls out and lets it go. Kate Jackson beats his man one-on-one. -on -one. What a grab touchdown, South Beauregard. Brutally though, Controlling the line of scrimmage in this one. Here's Braylon McKnight. He takes the handoff and he powers his way through the night defense Ooh. for a first down. And there's more where that came from later in the drive. The sophomore gets his name called once again. This time, I don't think any white jerseys are going to catch him. McKnight breaks free. It's another touchdown. Brulee, the Panthers roll to a big win in their opening playoff game. Brulee will play four seed Franklin Parish next week. And Southside unfortunately knocks off Live Oak. Their season ends in a 42 to 10 loss. Well, that's it for a couple games, but we got a lot more coming right after the break. Friday Night Blitz will be right back. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. Welcome back to another edition of the Friday Night Blitz. Jack Schemmel here alongside Bree Andrus. We had one game this week featuring two local teams, Walker and Dutchtown. In the same du district. Dutchtown, the 11 seed. Walker, the 22 seed. Dutchtown's only loss this season happens to be against Walker. Ooh. So let's see if the Wildcats could do it again. Let's get those highlights. Walker travels to Dutchtown for that first round of the playoffs. First quarter, 0-0 game. Owen Fletcher in Dutchtown. He takes the handoff, gives it to Lakeidron Harvey, who is carried over the goal line, and Dutchtown is up seven to nothing. Later first quarter, Walker is driving, and we're gonna have Troy Silv, famous number 48 as a quarterback, hands it off to Caden Jones. A little number trickly, 94. 94. And back to Silv. And oh, he ties wow. everything up. It's seven to seven. Second quarter, Walker driving again, Silv. He's going to take the snap, throws a dime to Carleon Joseph. Oh, nice. what a grab. Great camera work there. And Walker gets the lead back. And 
The Wildcats beat Dutchtown again. They win 41 oh. to 27. So the Wildcats are moving on. All right, well, let's now go over to the pit. Santa Ma hosting Westgate. The Gators looking to make a run in the playoffs this year. They've been doing pretty well. Westgate, though, gonna this quarterback heaves this ball, but it is picked off by the Gators. He's going to make a big return, but he will be taken down near midfield. They're not able to score on the ensuing drive, though. So Westgate ball, the quarterback hands it off around the outside, drags a few defenders, but he'll pick up a first down. Nice work. And then a few plays later, the direct snap in the Wildcat. The Tigers make it 21 to 6 over Santa Mall. But let's get you that final score. Santa Mall, unfortunately, losing this one to Westgate 28 to 20. And for the non-select Division Three scoreboard, we have some scores for you. Baker's season, unfortunately, comes to an end to Donaldsonville. Uh, it's the fourth quarter right now, I'm sorry, so it's not over yet. The Buffaloes can still make this happen, Jack. I know Maybe. you're excited about that. Port Allen beating Church Point 16-7. to They are moving on, and St. Helena's season, unfortunately, comes to an end against Pine. And now let's go over to North Iberville. We told you about them at 6. The whole town came out for this game. They were all really excited for the first playoff game in over two decades. Opening kickoff, Dekai Butler back to receive. He picks it up and runs, but he gets taken down really hard. And the ball comes loose and it's, pick it's picked up by Peyton Decolette. And so it'll be Tiger Ball. They get in the red zone. Fourth down, they need to convert. Cole Sonye passes it, and it's tipped and nearly intercepted. But the Bears get the stop nonetheless. We are still scoreless in the second quarter, and this one started as a slugfest. Oberlin driving, and yeah, uh, that guy right there, Mikel Toussaint <laughs> Jr., he's not going to let you get past him. He was all over the field tonight. But Bears driving in the second quarter, still scoreless, but the offense going to find some life here. Justice Roy pitches it to Tucson. Yes, he does both. He's a running back, too, <laughs> and he scores a touchdown. I hope he got his 1,000-yard rushing on the season tonight. I think he was pretty close to it before this game, so that one should be pretty solid by now. You see Coach Marcus Hill getting his first win as a part of the coaching staff for North Iberville as the Bears go on to cruise to victory 44-6 and win their first playoff game at home in school history. It's a party in Rosedale tonight. Oh, it's going to be a big party in <laughs> Rosedale tonight, and I know they are all excited about that. But don't go anywhere. We have way more highlights and scores to get to on the Friday Night Blitz. Stick around for more Friday Night Blitz. We now return to the Friday Night Blitz. Welcome back to the Blitz. We're taking you through the first week of high school playoff action in Louisiana. Now let's get to the Division II select level. St. Michael hosting Archbishop Hannon in another 11-22 matchup. The Warriors looking to win their second playoff game in school history. Midway through the first quarter, Hannon leads by three as running back Noah Morrell takes the handoff and fights his way into the end zone to give the Hawks a 9-0 lead. In the second quarter now, Warriors now down 15-0. Fourth and goal quarterback Brock Hamilton steps up and throws up a high rainbow pass to a wide open Jackson Sampson to cut into Hannon's lead. Scores now 15-7. Near the end of the second quarter, Hannon driving again. Quarterback Brody Smith keeps the ball on a design QB run and works his way up the middle for another touchdown. Hannon takes the 22 to 7 lead and they go on to win this one 29 to 20. Now the Woodlawn Panthers making the trip up north to take on CE Bird. Nothing going on with the Panthers in the first drive, but Bird quickly gets going. Harrison Ayers on the keeper, and here we go. Steps over a tackler, turns on the Jets, and he's gone. A 70-yard touchdown run. Bird leads 7 to nothing. Woodlawn would then go three and out, and it's third and about five for Bird. Desmond Simmons here in just a second. We're going to get to him. He gets the first down and a little bit more. It's going to lead to a field goal, so Bird is up. 10 to nothing, and it's a lot of bird highlights tonight. They have it again after another stop, but Ayers doesn't connect on the pitch here. It's going to be fumble. The ball's on the turf, and Cedric Jones falls on it to put the Panthers in bird territory. What was I talking about? 
We there see, we go. We There's see some woodlawn wood highlights. Maybe we got some woodlawn highlights. Represent. All right, and they are across the 50. They may as well go for it on fourth down, but it's big Daryl Cottenham flying in for the sack to oh, end the drive. Soon. Woodlawn falls, putting up a fight, 20 to nothing. All right, Carol and Denham Springs. I'm sorry, West Feliciana. We got. We did not have the final score earlier, but we have it now. West Feliciana winning big, 50 to 29. All right, let's go over to Carol. Well, I'm sorry, we have a correction to a score we showed you earlier. Denham Springs actually lost their game to West Washita by just one point. So they were so close, just not close enough. All right, now let's head over to Estruma. They are hosting Booker T. Washington in a shootout of a game. Tied at 22 in the second quarter, Frank Alexander chucks it to David Johnson, and uh, he speeds up past defenders to put Estruma up by eight. So they lead 30 to 22, Booker T. driving. Devon Stewart here gonna take the snap, dump it to Devondre Johnson. And he will have a massive burst of speed, takes it up the sideline for six. The failed two-point conversion would make it 30 to 28 at the half. So this one was a close one. A whole lot of offense going on here. Third quarter, Estruma still leading 30 to 28. Booker T driving. There's Sid Edwards, mayoral candidate. Stewart takes the snap, heaves the deep ball downfield Ooh. to DeCorian Mitchell, who somersaults into the end zone to put Booker T up by six. Now they lead 36-30. They get the ball back after a successful onside kick. But on the very next play, Stewart's going to fumble the snap. as Struma's defense swarms in to recover, putting the Indians back on offense. And this one was a close one and a high-scoring one, pretty high-scoring. Estruma gets the win big, 46-44. They They're moving out. on. <laughs> Sid Edwards, he can run a mayoral uh, race and coach a football team, Jack. I guess we'll he see can, how it goes next week. He can do it all. <laughs> Uh, over in select Division Two, unfortunately, it looks like McKinley uh, will take a loss, 42 to nothing. So they are out of the playoffs. All right, don't go anywhere. We have much more blitz right after this. <laughs> Friday Night Blitz will be right back. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. The Dunham football team is the number one seed in the Division Three select bracket. The Tigers earning the top seed in first round bye week thanks to an undefeated regular season. Next week, though, they'll play the winner of this game, 16 seed Parkview Baptist hosting Lafayette Renaissance. They're lit. Second half action, Eagles lead 35 to seven. Lafayette Renaissance, Renaissance trying to find their groove, but Jackson Byerly has different plans for the Eagles. He gets the sack and to make the Tigers punt. The Eagles trying to extend their lead in the drive as Noah Graves throws a 50-50 deep ball to the sideline, but it's picked off by the Tigers as they take the ball back over near their own goal line. It's still 35-7. to And then the Tigers are knocking on the door fourth and goal as Lafayette Renaissance tries to fit it across the middle, but it's the Eagles stepping across once again. Parkview, though, they win this one 49-21 winning it pretty easily. They will play Dunham next week. All right, let's get to some other scoreboards in this one. Amy winning 56 to nothing. Slaughter Community winning 50 to 20. Kentwood winning 56 to six. And Hamilton Christian beating St. John 41 to 30. All right, one more game of the night. The lights are on at A.W. Mumford Stadium as Sacred Heart travels to Southern Lab. We are scoreless, but that was until Jerry Botley ran it in for a score. And uh, then Next play, Sacred Heart driving, Southern Lab dominated both sides of the ball. Big defensive stop here, and Southern Lab will cruise to victory here, 52 to nothing. They are moving on, hopefully defending another state championship. But that's all we have tonight for the Friday Night Blitz. Have a good one.